In this video, I'm going to show you how I used AI to design my dropshipping store that was able to make me over $60,000 in just the last month. So let me just refresh my page real quick just to show you that these numbers are legit. And as you can see, in just the last month of February, we did around $60,000 in total revenue. And to give a closer look, we did around $10,000 in total net profit. So I just wanted to show you all of this to be a bit more transparent on what it's like to actually run a successful dropshipping store. But I've also wanted to take the time to teach you guys how I've designed my store to generate results like this so that you can do it too. So in this video, I'm going to show you everything from A to Z, starting with how to think of a good brand name for your store, how to create your logo in just a few seconds seconds using AI, how to create high quality branded images that stand out from your competitors who are still using basic images from AliExpress with white backgrounds, and ultimately how to design and do all of the copywriting for your homepage and your product page using a completely free theme that's already pre-installed on your Shopify store. And just to mention again, we're also going to be using AI to help us with the copywriting for the product and the homepages. And with all that being said, let's get straight into the value. So the very first step that we need to do is set up a new Shopify store that we can work with. And if you don't already have one, you can easily sign up for a free trial on their website or if you want to support this channel just use my link in the description below and once you've signed up for your store the next thing that we need to do is download some sort of app that's going to allow us to import products from aliexpress into our store and what i personally recommend if you're just starting out is an app called zendrop it's basically a fulfillment platform that lets you source and import any product from aliexpress except that it's going to give you cheaper prices and faster delivery times to all of your customers within around 10 to 12 days on average and if you install this app using the link in my description below you will get exclusive access to their list of trending products that they update every single week. And this is going to put you ahead of all the other beginners who are just mindlessly scrolling on AliExpress trying to test products that they think is going to sell. Whereas Zendrop has a dedicated product research team that are finding and validating all of these products that are proven to sell right now and are products that you could potentially sell as well. Not only that, you're also going to get private access to Zendrop Academy. And this is basically like having a mentor that can answer any question that you have about dropshipping or e-commerce. And I know sometimes you guys are commenting on my videos and if for whatever reason I'm not able to to reply to that, you can still have all of your questions answered through the Zendrop Academy where they have live coaching calls every single week and give you strategies and tips that are working today and overall just increase your knowledge and help you out further as a beginner. Now, honestly, guys, I wouldn't be pushing this if I didn't actually find this valuable. I've even worked out a deal with Zendrop to give all of you guys 50% off and a free $200 that you can use to fulfill all of your orders, which is kind of a no-brainer, especially with all the other perks that you get out of this platform. So that's up for you to decide if you want to take advantage of this. Okay, so once you've installed Zendrop, you just want to go to the left hand side where it says Aliexpress import and then it's just going to tell you to download their Chrome extension. So you want to make sure you install this that way we're able to import the products from Aliexpress. And for the sake of this video I'm going to be importing this product which is basically a three-in-one charging station and once you're ready to import your product you want to click on the Zendrop extension and then click this button that says add to import list. Then it's going to say it's gathering product data and it should be able to add to your import list. And now we're going to go back to Zendrop go to where it says my products and now we're going to see the product that we just imported from Aliexpress. We're going to click review and publish. And then from here, we're going to rename the product so it looks a lot more cleaner. And what I like to do with my product names is obviously put some keywords that are related to what the product is, but also put a name behind it. So for me, because this charger kind of has like this stand up position similar to a snake, I'm going to call it Viper 3-in-1 Wireless Charging Station. And once again, this name that I'm putting behind the product is going to make a bit more sense once we start getting into the design process of this store. And from here, we're going to click on description and we're going to select everything and just delete it because we're going to be editing it through the Shopify admin, which I just think is a little bit easier. And for the variants, we can leave it as is. Once again, we're going to edit all of that in the Shopify editor. And for the images, as long as they're already high quality, you can import everything that looks good to you. But for this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make your own custom made images that are going to look a lot better and more branded and help you stand out from all of your other competitors that are just importing the same images that they find off of AliExpress. So in this case, I'm going to leave it all checked because we're just going to delete everything later. And then we're going to click publish to my store. And then you just want to give it a few seconds and allow Zendrop to publish it onto the Shopify store. Once you do that, it should say something like linked. And if we check back into our store and go to products, we can see that the product is now imported right here. What we're going to do is click onto the product and then we're going to scroll down and just make sure to edit the variants so that they're a lot more cleaner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete every single variant so that we only offer two variants for the customer. Because as you can see, they offer a black and a silver color of this wireless charger. So I'm just going to make sure to give them the options of black and silver and then click done. And for the price, I always set it at least 2.5 to three times whatever it costs off of AliExpress. But of course, this product in particular is pretty 
expensive. We're just gonna assume that this product costs around $25 and three times 25 is around 75, but I'm just gonna round it up a bit higher and just make this cost around $79.99. And then we're gonna click save. And once you've uploaded your product, the next thing that we need to do is think of a good brand name that we could put behind this product. So I've made it super easy for you guys as I've created a chat GPT prompt that you can use for free. And all you have to do is enter in your product details, what niche your product is in and your target demographic. Once you fill in those details, it's gonna give you a list of 10 unique brand names that you can use for your store. And typically when I choose my brand name, I try to make it sound similar to like a luxury brand. But if you're not really looking for a brand name like this, no worries as I have a secondary prompt that can give you something a little bit more general, as you can see on this list here. So just go down in the description below to get access to these prompts. They're completely for free. And for the sake of this video, I'm gonna be choosing this name, which is Volterra. And that's what we're gonna be using as the brand name for this product. Now that we have our brand name, the next step is to create our logo. And I'm gonna show you how you can do this in like literally 10 seconds. So what I recommend using is a free tool called Canva. If you don't already have an account, just go down in my description and you can set one up for free. And as you can see here, I've already developed a logo for this brand and it's super simple. It's literally just the text of the brand name and also just a little logo to represent the niche of my store. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I did this. So I'm just gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna delete this logo. Once you have a blank document, you wanna head over to design. And then from here, you just wanna look up logo. Once you look that up, you're gonna have a wide different options of logos and templates that you can use for yours. In my case, I ran into this one and I'm just gonna use that. All I'm gonna do is delete everything here and put the name of my brand, but I'm gonna put it all in caps. I'm gonna drag this away and just delete all these random elements that I put here. I'm gonna put it back into the center. And then from here, I'm gonna click where it says elements. And then I'm just gonna type in thunder. And then on the graphics tab, I'm gonna click see all. And then now I'm just gonna try to look for a thunder graphic that I think looks good. And me personally, I think this one looks the best. So I'm gonna import that. And what I'm gonna do is change all the colors to black so that it looks like this. Now I'm just gonna make the icon a little bit bigger and I'm gonna put it to the right side of my logo. And I'm gonna select both of these and just kind of center them like this. And then I'm gonna hold the command key so that I have more freedom of movement for this logo. And I just kind of lined it up to whatever I feel like looks good. And there you go, that's pretty much how I created my logo. And then once you've completed it, all you have to do is click on share, click download, and then make sure you download it with a transparent background. I believe you do need Canva Pro in order to be able to do this. So I would just recommend taking advantage of the free trial and you'll be able to download it completely for free with the transparent background. And before you actually export your logos, I wanna mention that you should create one with black text as we just did, but also creating another one with white text, just because you never know if you might need to use either one of these. Once we start to edit the theme of our store and depending on the color schemes that you'll choose, you might need to use your white logo or sometimes your black logo. And you're gonna see all of this make sense in just a little bit. And once you have downloaded your logos, what you wanna do is open each of them up and make sure to crop them something similar to a size like this. That way we remove all the borders around it because when we download it, it's basically downloading as a square image. So we just wanna make sure to crop it accordingly like this. So I'm using a Mac and what I'm gonna do is click tools. So I'm just gonna make sure to crop it as so and then click save. And make sure I do the same thing for the white logo as well. And then I'll click save here. So now that we have our brand name and our logos are ready to go, the next thing that we're gonna do is begin editing the theme for our store. And the theme that I'm gonna be using is the Dawn theme, which comes pre-installed on all Shopify stores. I'm here to tell you that you don't need to use any sort of paid theme in order to get sales. Pretty much 99% of all the stores that I have running today are always using the Dawn theme. And I'm gonna show you how you can edit this to make it look really branded and look good for all of your customers. And if you don't already have this theme, just scroll down here and you'll see it right here and then just click add. Once it's added, you just wanna publish it. And then now we're gonna click customize. And from here, you just wanna scroll down and you should be able to see the product that we imported earlier. I'm gonna click on the product and then we're gonna go up here where it says default products. We're gonna select on products and then create a new template. And I'm gonna go ahead and just name it after my product, which is Viper, or just something that helps you remember this specific product. And then you're gonna click create template. And the reason why we do this is that anytime we make changes to this specific product, it's gonna make sure that the changes only stay on this product. Because once you start adding different sections such as images that highlights the features of this product specifically, if you don't create a template, it's gonna show this exact section on all of the products on your store, which you don't want. That's why it's really important to create a specific template for each individual product on your store. So once this template is created, we're not fully done yet. You have to go back into your product editor on your Shopify backend, scroll all the way down and where it says theme template, you're gonna click on it and then select the template that we just created earlier and then click save. And this is gonna make sure that this product is using this template that we've also created here. So any changes that we make is gonna be applied to this product. So I hope that makes sense. And the next thing that we're gonna do is edit the entire color scheme of our store. And for the sake of this video, we're gonna be modeling after the color scheme of this store, just because it uses the same type of colors that I always use for all of my stores. I always go with black and white just because it's really simple, it's really clean, and it's not distracting for your customers. And if you're struggling to choose a color for your store, you cannot go wrong using neutral colors such as this. So on the theme editor, I'm first gonna select the announcement bar, and then we're gonna edit the scheme. And where it says color scheme, we're gonna change it to scheme number two, just because by default, this theme already has a gray color scheme 
scheme that we can easily use. But if you want to choose a different color, all you have to do is click edit and then choose whatever color that you want for your announcement bar. But in my case, I'm just going to be using gray because this is what fits with the brand for my product. And the next thing that we're going to do is make this menu bar black. And in order to do that, we're going to click on theme settings. We're going to click on colors. And now we're going to make a few edits to our color schemes here. So color scheme number one is basically the colors that you're going to be seeing on your buy now buttons. So for example, if we select solid button background and we select a red, it's changing the color of our buy now button, but I'm going to keep it black because that's what the other store is doing. And what I'm going to do is just copy that color code so that we can apply it onto our menu bar. So for the menu bar, we're going to be using color scheme number three. And then for the background, I'm just going to paste that color code that I copied earlier. And then for the solid button label, I'll just select where it says recently selected, which should be the same exact color code that we have right here. We're going to go back and notice how we have a blue color scheme right here. This one is basically responsible for that little sale tag that you usually see on your product. So we also want to make sure that this is black as well. So I'm going to make the background of that black. And the reason that you're not seeing a sale tag is because I did not put any compare price tag over here. But when you do do that, you're going to notice that your little sale tag is going to be black. And now that we have all of our color schemes set up correctly, now I'm going to go back to sections and I'm going to select the header section, which is basically this menu bar here. On the right hand side, I'm going to scroll all the way down. And on the color scheme, I'm going to change it to color scheme number three. And now we can see that the menu bar has changed to a black color. And now I'm just going to upload the logo so that we can complete this top section of the theme. So to add your logo, just click on theme settings, click on logo, select image. And from here, I'm going to upload my black and white logos that I created earlier. And because the menu bar is black, I'm going to make sure to select my white colored logo and click done. And what I'm going to do is increase the size to around 130 PX. And I think that's a pretty good size. All right. So now that we have that set up, now I'm just going to make a few edits to the product page just to make it look a little bit better. So I'm going to go back to sections and I'm going to select on product information, which is basically this entire element here that shows our product on the right hand side. I'm going to scroll down and where it says desktop layout, I'm going to select thumbnail carousel and on mobile layout. I want to make sure that it shows the thumbnails as well. And for the desktop media width, I'm going to select a medium, which is going to make this image a little bit smaller and make everything a little bit more even. And on the left hand side, I'm going to select the buy buttons and I'm going to remove the dynamic checkout buttons just because I only want an add to cart button on the product information tab. I'm going to remove this text, which pretty much shows the name of your store. It's honestly not necessary. So I'm going to remove that the little share button. I'm also going to remove. And once we've made those edits, I'm going to go back into theme settings. And now we're going to change the font of our store. So you want to click on typography and for the headings, I'm going to choose Avenir and I'm going to select Avenir next. And over here, you have the ability to choose different styles of your fonts. For this one, I'm going to choose semi bold. Then I'm going to click select. And for the body text, I'm going to change this to Harmonia Sans. I'm going to select this. I'm going to keep it at regular and then click select. And now we have some nice clean fonts for both the headings and also some of the body text that we're going to be adjusting later on in this video. And what I've noticed on this store is that they have slightly rounded edges on their images and also in their add to cart button. And personally, I always like to do that with my stores. I just feel like it gives it a more modern feel. So what you want to do is make sure you're still on the theme settings scroll all the way down and we're first going to edit our buttons. And for the button corner radius, I'm going to put it all the way up to 40 PX. And you're going to see it's going to make our add to cart button completely round. And then you want to select content containers. And for the corner radius, we're going to set it to radius of 20 PX. And for media, we're going to do the same thing and change the corner radius to 20 PX. And as you can see, some of the images on our product page have those rounded corners, which is exactly what we're looking for. And now the next thing that we need to do is create high quality and branded images to replace everything that we imported from AliExpress. Because when it comes to testing your product, the last thing you want to do is leave all these pictures as is and leaving your products with these basic white backgrounds. Because otherwise, if all the other dropshippers are doing this same thing, there's nothing about your store or your brand that's differentiating yourself versus the other typical beginner dropshippers. So here's an example of a product page that I personally design when I test my product. So at first glance, you can see that I have a nice lifestyle image of the product without a basic white background. And then I have a lot of images that showcase the best features that people actually care about with the product. And notice how the backgrounds of each image stay consistent with the branding and the color scheme of my store. Everything has like a nice grayish background with these other graphics that just give like a more branded feel to it. And if we get to the very end, notice how I have a couple of lifestyle images that help the customer to visualize how this type of product would look like in their own life. And I think this is one of the most important things that you can include in your product page that can differentiate yourself with all of your competitors. So with all that being said, I'm going to show you how you can edit all of your images that look just like mine and how you can do all of the copywriting that you see here completely with AI. So when it comes to making good images, the very first thing that you need to figure out is the best features that people actually care about for your product. If you're struggling to know what you should be showing in your photos, you can take a look at your competitors and competitors that are actually making sales and just look at the images that they have and take note of the features that they are talking about. Because if this product is selling for them, chances are they are saying the right things in their images. So we want to make sure that we're talking about the same type of features 
as them. So what I would recommend to do is just open up a new document and just write out your five best features for your product. So in my case, the best features for my three-in-one charger, and one of the first things that I ideally wanna show them is the fact that it can charge all three devices at the same time. Number two, we wanna remind them of their pain point and stress the fact that this avoids messy cables and promotes a cleaner workspace. Number three, we do wanna show that this charger supports MagSafe and also works with phone cases as well. We also wanna mention the fact that they can rotate their phone in a portrait or landscape view, which is good for FaceTiming and watching videos. And last but not least, we also wanna mention that it has a foldable design and it's great for traveling. So once you've figured out your five best features for your products, you just wanna make sure that all of the images on your store reflect all of those features and that you have the copywriting that talks about all of those features and benefits just like I have done here. And fortunately, you don't have to think about doing all of this copywriting by yourself. I've created a chat GPT prompt that lets you upload all of your best features and it will create all of the copywriting for you. So as you can see here, it's telling me what kind of headline that I can use for my image here and also some of the subtext that I could put in my image. And it was able to generate all of the copywriting for all five of my images. So if you wanna use this, just scroll down in the description below. I have this chat GPT prompt available for you if you need it. So now that you have all of the copywriting for the text on your images, the next thing that we need to do is download and source as many images as possible that we can use to edit everything together to make them look as branded as possible as I have here on my product page. So what I would recommend installing is this Chrome extension called Ali Save Plus. It's completely for free and I'll have a link below for you to download it. And this will basically allow you to download all of the images from any AliExpress listing. So for example, if I wanted to download all of the images that we see here, then I would select main images. If I want all of their variant images over here, then I could select variant and then description images is basically all of the images that you see in their description down here. And basically what you wanna do is just try to find as many AliExpress stores that are selling this same exact product and download all of their images and you can use those to re-edit them and make them look more branded. All of the images that I have here on this store was edited purely with Canva. And I'm gonna give you a demonstration on how you can edit your variant images to look something like this. And then I'm also gonna show you how you can take some of those images that you downloaded off of AliExpress and put a nice clean background that matches with the color scheme of your store and how to put all of the copywriting and include some nice clean icons that you see right here. So now I'm gonna show you how to make your variant image look like this. So I'm just gonna duplicate this and just delete all of the elements and I'm gonna start from a clean slate. The first thing you wanna do is upload the variant image that you downloaded off of AliExpress. So in this case, this is what they had on the AliExpress listing. I'm gonna go ahead and drag that and upload it into Canva. Then I'm gonna select this image. I'm gonna make sure that it's full sized and then I'm gonna click edit photo and we're gonna remove the background right here. Once it has removed the background, we also wanna get rid of all this stuff. So I'm gonna select this button here. We're gonna increase the brush size a little bit. And I'm just gonna simply delete all of these little extra images that we see on the right hand side. And then we're gonna go back. And now I'm just gonna crop this image just a little bit smaller, something around this size. And then I'm just gonna drag this product all the way into the center of the image. And now the next thing is that we have to find a backdrop that looks like this. So the way that you can find some backdrops is by going into the photos tab here. And what I did is I just typed in table background or you could type in table backdrop. And with a little bit of scrolling, you can see that I found the exact same backdrop that you see right here. So what we're gonna do is right click that and we're gonna set the image as a background. And it's basically gonna automatically look like this. And now we basically have the product looking like it's sitting on top of a table. But if you notice on this image here, I had like a little shadow that kind of gives a more realistic effect to the product. So in order to do that, all we're gonna do is select this. We're gonna right click and click copy. And then we're gonna right click again and then paste that same exact image. And we're gonna make sure it's also centered right on top of the other layer. We're gonna click on edit photo and we're gonna add a drop shadow. And what we're gonna do is change the distance to around 35 and we can make the intensity a little bit darker, maybe around 60. And we're gonna try to just line up the bottom of this image with the image that's behind it. And then I'm gonna drag this line so that we can cut off the rest of that layer that's on top of it. And with this still selected, I'm gonna right click it, go to where it says layer, and I'm gonna send it to the back. So now you can see that we have this slight drop shadow that's behind the charger, but I do notice that there is a little issue that I see right here. So what I'm gonna do is just undo what I did and make sure to cut out a little bit further. Maybe I'm just gonna cut it out all the way down to here. And I'm gonna select layer and then send it to the back again. And now we can see that it just looks like one clean image and we can use this as a nice variant image for the black charger that we're selling on our store. So once again, that's how you can create your variant image. And this is exactly what I did for the other color of this charger. So all I did is I found another backdrop that had a lighter color tone that matched more with this silver charger. And I followed the exact same process that I showed you guys. So now I'm gonna show you guys how you can make feature images that look just like this. So I'm gonna duplicate this and I'm gonna delete everything so we can start it all on a clean slate. So notice on the background of the photo, it's kind of like a very light gray. So if your store has a similar color scheme as mine and you're doing like a white and black aesthetic, then I would recommend to make your background sort of a light gray, but don't make it fully white. But let's say if your store was like a beauty store and your color scheme was pink, then for the background photos, I would choose something that's like a really, really light pink. So that is the first step that you need to do. Just make sure you set the background of your 
your image to a really light color that matches the overall scheme of your store. And now depending on whatever feature that you're trying to represent, you just wanna find the image that you downloaded off of AliExpress. So for example, after a lot of searching, I found an AliExpress listing that showed an image that represents that this works with MagSafe. So I thought this was a really good base image that we can use and we can edit it so that we can make it look more branded and match with our store. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is just stretch out this image so that it fills up the entire background. And then I'm gonna edit the photo and remove the background. And it looks like Canva kind of messed up a little bit here and removed more parts of the photo. No worries, I'm gonna show you how you can fix that. So just select this little adjustment tool here. And instead of erase, we're gonna click on restore. And we're gonna make the brush size a little bit smaller. And we're gonna show the original image just so we have an idea of what other parts of the image that it accidentally erased. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit closer so that we could be more precise. And all I'm gonna do is just brush this over so that we can restore this part of the image. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller so that we can be more precise. So I'm just being really careful here so that it looks as good as possible once we finish this. And I think that's good enough. So I'm gonna zoom back out and then go back and see how it looks. So I think that looks pretty good. And what I'm gonna do now is just make this slightly smaller so that we can leave some room to put our copywriting in some of the other graphics that you see along the edges of the image. So the first thing that we wanna do is of course put our copywriting. So we're gonna select the text tool and now we're just gonna add a heading. So because I've already used my chat GPT prompt to generate all of the copywriting for each of my features, all I have to do at this point is just copy and paste. So because we're gonna be talking about MagSafe, I'm gonna use the copywriting that it made for the MagSafe compatibility. So all I'm gonna do is just copy this and literally paste it right here. And then I'm just gonna make the text a lot smaller. I'm gonna stretch this out a little bit so it's just all in one line. And we can probably make it just a little bit smaller, maybe somewhere around this size. And then now we're gonna add some body text. I'm just gonna drag it right under here. And also I forgot to make the alignment of this text on the left-hand side. So make sure you do that for all of your text. Just make sure everything's against the left-hand side so that everything lines up perfectly. And now I'm gonna go back into my prompt and copy the subtext that it was able to generate. And I'm simply gonna paste it here. And I'm just gonna make this a little bit smaller and then also make the subtext smaller as well and make it somewhere around this size. I think this size looks pretty good. And now the next thing we wanna do is add some nice icons where we can quickly highlight some of the key features of what we're talking about here. So in order to make these icons, I literally just used a template that I found on Canva. So if you head over to design, you can simply just type in product features and this will also give you a lot of inspiration on how you can make product feature images as you can see from the examples that they have here. But I'm gonna go ahead and use this that I found earlier and I'm gonna go ahead and just import this and we're gonna add it as a new page. So now this should be directly under the image that we're currently working on. And you can see that they already have a bunch of icons that we can just simply copy and put onto our existing image. So what I'm gonna do is just take one of these icons and I'm simply just gonna drag it all the way up here. And then I'm gonna highlight it again and make another copy of it so that we have two of them. And then now all we need to do is just replace these icons that are related to the feature that we wanna talk about. So you can notice on this one, I basically just highlighted that it has MagSafe and that it's case friendly. So we just need to find an icon that represents a magnet and an icon that represents a phone. And an easy way to do that is go into elements and I'm just gonna type in magnet and we're gonna go to the graphics tab and I'm just gonna use this one. And as you can see, it just has like a nice magnet icon. What I'm gonna do is delete this battery icon. We're gonna place this into the center of that circle. And for the text, we're just gonna put MagSafe. And we're just gonna do the same thing for this one. We're gonna delete the battery icon, but this time we wanna say that it's case friendly. So I'm just gonna put iPhone. I'm gonna click on graphics and then I'm just gonna try to find some sort of flat icon, maybe something like this. And that's pretty much good enough. And now we're gonna make it as small as possible. I'm gonna zoom into this so that we can actually like put it inside of the circle. So it can look something like that. I'm gonna zoom back out and there you go. It looks pretty good. And the next thing I'm gonna do is highlight all of these elements here so that I can resize it and just make it a little bit bigger. And I'm just gonna place it somewhere where I feel like it looks kind of good. Maybe just somewhere around here or we can make it a little bit lower. So I'll probably put it like somewhere down here. And then the last thing that we can do is just add these nice little borders around the image just to add a little bit more flair and give a consistent experience as they see all of the images on our store. So the way that you can find graphics that you can put along the edge of your images, we can just use the elements tab. And I'm just gonna type in bubble border and we're gonna click on the graphics tab. And you can see they have a lot of different graphics that you can use along the edges of your photos. So the one that I used to look a little bit similar to this. And after scrolling a bit more, I was able to find the one that I actually used on the photos that you see up here. And what I'm gonna do is just change the color so that it matches the theme of our store. So for the main color, I'm gonna change it to a grayish color like this. And then for the line, I'm gonna do something slightly darker, maybe something that looks like this. And what I'm gonna do is reduce the transparency to make it a bit lighter. We're gonna do a transparency of around 20. And then now I'm gonna select this layer. I'm gonna right click it. And then I'm gonna send it to the back so that it's behind all of the images. And this is where you could just kind of play around with it. You can put it along the edge of your image and place it however you feel like it looks good. You can also rotate it like this so that if you want it along the edge and make it look something like this. But that's pretty much how I created the graphic that you see up here. You can see that I've kind of angled it in a specific way and I just played around with it. And this is pretty much everything that I did to create all of the featured images that you see here. So you can see, for example, this one followed the same exact approach. I just found an image off of AliExpress. I removed the background. I put the 
the copywriting right here, I put a nice little icon and I also put some of those graphics to kind of fill in the space of the image and add a little bit more flair. So of course, this is gonna take some time, but if you wanna make your store look heavily branded, I think it's something worth doing. That way you can really differentiate yourself from other competitors and have a really cleanly designed store as you can see right here. And now that we've prepared all of our images, all we have to do is upload everything into the product editor here. So what I'm first gonna do is delete everything that we've imported from AliExpress as we're definitely not gonna be needing any of these and then just delete everything here. And now I'm just gonna upload everything that I've created on Canva and upload it right here. And as you can see, everything has been uploaded and everything is in the exact order that I want it to be. And if you notice, I do still have one image with a white background. The reason I still have this is just for design purposes when we start to edit our homepage. And you're gonna see this make sense as we get to that part of this video. So once everything is uploaded, you just wanna scroll all the way down. And now we're gonna attach all of our variant photos to the ones that we've created. So for the black one, you just wanna make sure to select the variant image that we created earlier. And for the silver one, we're gonna select silver here. And once you've done that, you wanna click save. And now this is where we can enter the copywriting that we see on my demo page here. So you wanna have something similar to this format where we just have one simple sentence that explains what our product is and five quick benefits followed by emojis. Once again, we're gonna be using AI to help us out here so that we don't have to do any of the copywriting ourselves. So if you want, you can use my chat GPT prompt in the description below. And all you need to do is copy and paste this prompt, edit a few details for your product name, the key features and benefits and things like that. And once you do that, you should be able to get a full complete outline that you can use to copy and paste for the layout that you see on my demo store here. So for the introduction section, I'm just simply gonna copy everything that it has here. And then I'm gonna paste it into the description. And it looks like it did not format it correctly. So I'm just gonna make sure to put everything kind of like in a bullet point format. So everything looks good here. And after you do that, you wanna go back into your theme editor, refresh the page, and you should see most of those changes take effect here. And we're gonna go to the left-hand side and where it says description, we're gonna make sure to drag that under our price tag so that the description is positioned before our add to cart button. And next you just wanna click add block and we're gonna select icon with text. And this is basically where we can highlight some of the things that our brand offers. So as you can see on my demo page here, I put 30 day guarantee, hassle-free returns and free shipping. So you just wanna make sure to make those changes. So all you have to do is go on the right-hand side. You have the option to change the icons of all of these and also the text that is displayed under the add to cart button. And I would also recommend adding some drop downs that showcase your shipping and delivery times, your return policy, and also the specifications of your product and also what your order includes. These are just things that help the buying process for the customer and I strongly recommend adding them. And in order to do that, all you have to do is add another block and select a collapsible row and you can see it right here. And all you have to do is rename it to like shipping policy. And on this box here, you can just basically say how long it takes for your orders to be delivered. And of course, if you're using Zendrop, which I strongly recommend, then you could put something like we deliver your products within 10 to 12 days. And all you have to do is just keep adding more collapsible rows, just depending on the things that you wanna include. And then if you want to incorporate all of these headlines and all of these subtexts, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this here. What you wanna do is add a new section and then you're gonna select the multi-row section. And we're gonna just drag that up here so that it's right under our add to cart section. And this is basically where you can work on each individual row. You can just upload all of those images that you edited on Canva so that you can highlight all of the best features of your product. And from here, you can just use my chat GPT prompt. I have everything written for you where you can easily just copy the headline. You can just paste it right here. Take the subtext as well. Paste it right here. Select your featured image. And that's pretty much how you can make this section look just like what I have here. And below this entire section that showcases all of our features and benefits, I also have a section for customer testimonials, a guarantee, and also frequently asked questions. So in order to add these testimonials, you just have to add a section, but instead we're gonna choose multi-column. We're gonna drag this right under our multi-row. We're gonna make sure to center our column alignment. For the button label, we're gonna delete that because we don't want a button on this section. And then from here, you just choose each individual column. And once again, you can just easily copy and paste everything that you see here from the chat GPT prompt. If you wanna add this guarantee section, all you have to do is add a section and you're gonna select rich text. And this is basically where you can enter the guarantee section. And then if you want the FAQs as well, you just wanna add a collapsible content section here. And this is where you can easily enter all of your FAQ questions. Once again, this is all available with my prompt. And what I would recommend doing is exactly as I did here. You can even ask ChatGPT to provide you with the answers to these questions. And you simply copy and paste everything here. And then last but not least, which is also really important, is to have some sort of reviews for your product. And the app that I have here is an app called Review. I'll have a link down in the description for you to install it. And this is something that I prefer to use the most just because it allows you to import reviews directly from Amazon, which is a lot more higher quality and sounds more realistic rather than importing your reviews from AliExpress. I would never recommend importing your reviews from AliExpress because they look really fake and it's just gonna bring down all of the credibility on your store. So that's pretty much the full design of the product page. On the top of the page, we have our high quality images that showcase all of our best features of our product. We have the introduction and the benefits of our product is right here as well. And if you keep scrolling down, we have our collapsible contents that highlight our shipping and delivery information, the product specifications, what's included with our order. And we also have our key features and benefits that are located on the bottom. And you can see here, I have about five of my key features 
features. And then we have our customer testimonials that look just like this. We have our store guarantee. We have the FAQ section, and then we have the review section. And now the last thing that you need to set up on your store is your homepage. This isn't necessarily the most important part of your store, but it is good to have just to give a more branded and more trustworthy experience for all of your customers. So you can see on my demo store, I just have one clean lifestyle image that portrays my products and a simple headline that reminds the customers of the problems that our product solves for them, followed by a shop now button. And below this section, I also showcase a collection of different chargers just to make the store look more legitimate rather than just selling one product. And this is an approach that I would recommend that you follow if you do decide to test one product. All you really need to do is just find related products and just simply upload them to your store using Zendrop. And an easy way to do that is just go on your main product listing, scroll a bit down, and you're gonna see a bunch of related products that are in the same niche of the main product. So for example, I can just easily upload this into my store. I can also upload this charger into my store. And then you just simply create a collection and then you can showcase this on your homepage. And right below this section, I just have a reminder of one of the key features of our products. And then I also have like a nice lifestyle image of someone putting their charger into their pocket. And then I also have like a mission statement for our brand and also some nice icons that highlight some of the things that we offer in our brand. So if you need help on the copywriting of your homepage, once again, you can just use my chat GPT prompt, enter in some details about your product, and it's going to generate everything for you for the hero banner, for the collection section, and pretty much everything that I just showed you on my homepage. This is basically the design that I follow for my homepage and my product pages. And it's what I recommend you do when you're looking to design a store to give you the highest conversion rate possible. So of course, having a cleanly designed store is a really important process when it comes to drop shipping, but I would not recommend taking all of this effort without first validating your product with a good video ad. Because without a good video ad, no one is going to be clicking onto your store in the first place. So if you need help with creating high converting video ads for Facebook and TikTok ads, make sure to watch my full tutorial here as it walks you through the entire process. And other than that, that's pretty much going to wrap up this entire video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to this channel as I'm going to keep continuously providing free value to you guys just like this video. And make sure to join my free Discord group as well as I have a bunch of free assets in there that you can download that will help with your e-commerce journey. And you can also connect with like-minded entrepreneurs who can also potentially help you out with e-commerce and dropshipping as well. With all that being said, I thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.